Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at Macross, the Super Dimensional Fortress 1. It's an art book based off the Macross animated movie, which basically was a retelling of the original Macross or Robotech TV series. This book was sent to me kindly, very kindly, I should say, by Sumo Thori, friend and watcher of this channel, and that we're going to look at today. So yeah, let's jump into it. Check it out. All right, let's go. Jump in here. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of Robotech. If, you know, Macross, Mospita, Southern Cross, the gamut, you name it, I'm there for it. I was a big fan of it growing up and still a big fan of it to this day. So yeah, we're going to have a quick look through here. Macross, the movie, the animation is advertising for some other art books and stuff. But yeah, this was really neat because... Basically, they kind of retold it and reanimated it in um, movie format, you know, better art, better design. Got a nice little poster here that you can pull out of Min May, you know, waking up in the morning, little stretch on. Perhaps she's wearing Rick Hunter's shirt. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. But yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, we'll fold that back in, slide this open. The film story. And yeah, that was kind of the interesting thing. Like, I actually have this on DVD, the Macross thing, and I actually watched it fairly recently. So this would be pretty cool to kind of go through. I assume most of it's going to be stills from the actual movie. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm a big fan of all these designs. And sometimes just getting to see some of the animation in still just shows how much detail was there, like in each frame. A lot of these background paintings and stuff like that. Just incredibly detailed for something that's going to be on the screen for a few seconds. And this is kind of a newer Min May design that they kind of put through after, you know. But, but what's kind of weird is she looks older here, but this is a retelling of the original events, and she was pretty young then. So yeah, we kind of flip through here, you know, we see Rick and Roy and, you know, Lisa Hayes. All the really cool designs here. And it gets into, like, the, the movie's really interesting because it's a good two hours. And it kind of condenses everything that happened. Because that, that, that part there kicks back to when Rick and, um, you know, or Hikaru, whoever, whichever, <laughs> whichever you prefer. Uh, but when Rick and Min May were trapped in the bowels of the SDF-1. And so they basically had to survive till they could be saved. And they are there for a while. You know, and this is kind of post that. Lisa's giving them the business about uh, goofing around. Roy Foker getting some Madame Grant action. You know, it's a, it's a really cool series. I, I do love all the designs. Like, even the updated designs are still pretty strong. I'm still just a, a big fan of the original, like, kind of TV style of everybody. But these are kind of a little slicker, you know, for better or for worse. Things can be too clean, can be too broken down. Little Miria, you know, the Zentradi. Yeah, some some really cool stuff here. But just uh, just sometimes you kind of you you know if you, if you over over refine, you lose a little bit of what made the original design special. And so sometimes you can oversimplify. But I, none of this stuff is bad. I'm, I'm not saying that. Just just in general when we're talking about design. Yeah, and this is when, you know, on the planet here, Lisa kind of gets into a bit of a, what, what it would be like to settle down kind of feeling when they're on the planet there. With Rick, obviously, you know, that kind of love triangle. A little Max Sterling here. The ace, Max Sterling. Well, Miriam. Yeah, and it kind of goes through a lot of the that stuff where in the movie, where they condense all that stuff down, Max and, and Miria getting together, the Zentradi, you know, the kiss, all that stuff that kind of starts giving them culture. You know, it's cool. But yeah, a lot of, a lot of really great art and design here. I love the explosions, you know, all the missile swarms and stuff like that. It's really cool, like how they do the trails. And that was an interesting thing, too. You've seen a lot of the trails would have, like, the different colors. Kind of like G.I. Joe, the blue and the red lasers. So the missiles would have different color trails. 
But yeah, a lot of really, a lot of really cool, just single shots, and uh, I'm a big fan of that because you just get to kind of soak in a lot of this detail. Lots of them attacking with music, as it were. Yeah, so <laughs> some really cool. Oh, he's just all like getting ripped down. And so, yeah, I think this is this is where we're going to get into a lot of the actual design work for the animated series. And this is the stuff that's exciting to me. You know, we'll get, probably see some of the Shoji Kawamori design, stuff like that. You know, uh, and I do like that they have all the heights for everybody. Roy Foker, clearly standing heads and tall above the rest. Max. That's kind of interesting that Max is taller than uh, Rick. I never, I, never, I never really thought of it that way. I always thought that, you know, they were... He was a little guy. But yeah, here's a lot of the turnarounds and the expressions. Yeah, it's all all great stuff. I'm just I'm just a big fan of the design phase of a lot of a lot of projects. Because you kinda you kinda really get to see what everyone was looking at, what they were working from when making the animated series and the movie and whatnot. So yeah, you got the cool cool shit. And see, like, they kinda like these are kind of overextended, like a lot of the stuff, like the the redesigns for their suits, a, a little much. You know, I'm I'm not a huge I'm not a huge fan of these giant shoulder pads like that. But you know, it, it was a different time. <laughs> um, yeah, like even Roy and stuff for this movie, a lot of these guys did get like a little tune up in their design. And like I said, some of it for better, some of it for worse. We'll take it. We'll take it. I know, I think interestingly, I think the thing I notice about a lot of these designs is that a lot of the characters are more squat than I feel like they should be. Like, I just feel like like a lot of them, he looks like he should just be a little bit longer. Like a lot of, like in the bodies and stuff like that, they just really have a condensed, stocky feel to them. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting uh, just looking at them. Like even, even like a lot of these designs, they just kind of, Everyone feels kind of scrunched a little. And that just could be the guy who was doing all these sketches. It could just be his thing. He kind of just does these kind of squatter bodies. But I always, even the Zentradi and stuff like that, I always felt like they were really long and lean. But yeah, like a lot of the stuff's great. Mo mostly just because I like to see it. Like I like to see the designs and the helmets and stuff like that. Like they're, it's like almost like they're copying the way the helmets were like for Rick and the rest of the crew, but just kind of like switching it up enough. Go flip back here. Yeah, see, like they're just kind of switching it up enough so that it still looks similar. Like they're kind of reversing some of the elements of the helmet on both of them and then giving these guys like a softer, more rounded thing and these like the harder edges. And it's kind of interesting, but they're sharing some very similar shapes and silhouettes. It's kind of neat. Yeah, see, even these guys. Mechanics of Macross. But yeah, this stuff's really cool. I love seeing it. I love seeing the designs, just regular people kicking around. There we go. Get into the SDF-1. And all the, like, well, all the little mechanical bits and bobs. And that's the thing. It's like the nightmare of having to replicate all this stuff. Like, it's fine to draw something once and kind of noodle with it and get all that detail in. But then you're like, oh yeah, guess what? You guys got to draw this every time we show this ship fly by. And like, yeah, and the cockpit stuff and all the, the quarters, the crew quarters and stuff like that. And command center. There's the, the robot mode. Yeah, there's like a, a lot of really cool, cool designs here. Like, you know, and they just quickly sketch in the thing. Be like, oh, that's how they pull in the, the Veritech fighters and stuff. So, yeah, it's really cool. And like, look at these. Like, this is what's going on inside the SDF-1. They just got all these sketches. Like it's just like everything's just crammed in there. Those ships all smashed up. This is beautiful. And then we got these like restaurants and bars and stuff. Yeah, they're they're really doing some like, and that's the thing. Like, there's you just don't think about a lot of this stuff. Like when you're, you know, when you're watching a TV show or an animated series or a movie or whatever. But a lot of this stuff is designed out ahead of time. Like they've planned everything. It's like all the stuff. And it, especially when you're making like something that's like a comic book, a graphic novel or animated thing, you have to create these worlds, restaurants, everything from the ground up. And even if you're basing it 
in reality or current day or whatever you'd like to call it, you, you're still going to want to design certain things. You're still going to want to create new things so that it just doesn't look so boring. But yeah, like we got all the, the gauges and designs. I like how everything is labeled for what it's for. That's incredible. Yeah, I got the fighter designs, gear walk mode, just like the full armor. That's awesome. Like full transformation. Yeah, that stuff's great. And guys are just out there just drawing this stuff, getting all this like this is like their Bible. Like you have to create that stuff. And then you see, I see so many books, so many projects where people are showing it off and you can tell that all they have is the few pages they have and the script. They don't know what the cars look like in their futuristic world. They don't know what ships look like. They don't know what a glass of soda looks like unless someone just draws one. <laughs> like, you know, but like that kind of thing or what stop signs look like or intersections or anything in their future world because they haven't gotten there yet. And like a lot of this stuff is built out before they even get into production. Like there's a lot of pre-production happening so that everyone knows what's what. Yes, look at all this. All the gooey, the gooey innards of their ships. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. See, I'm not gonna have like, here's what a Veritech fighter would be like inside a ship. You know, and they're just doing, they're doing all that planning ahead of time. It's really awesome. Ventrati warships. Yeah, there's like all the ships. Look at that. Love all these toys and all the vehicles and stuff that they put out. Oh, so good. Oh, look, here's all the UN Spacey versus the Zentradi. Yeah, look at these. Oh, yeah, look, the rough score when they're there and Lisa's trying to play house. Look, there, see. There's the thing, like I was saying, they're designing all these dishes and utensils, like little little squeezy chopsticks that connect together at the end. I'm, I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but like, do you know what I mean? Like they're in there creating all the utensils, all the glassware, so that you know how these people lived. And so that's that's the thing that you have to you have to think about when world building. What what were the people eating with? What what were the this wiped out civilization that Rick and uh, Lisa come to find, how were they living? What were they drinking from? What were they eating from? That kind of, that kind of stuff is valuable. Here we got some really cool, kind of looks like it's like, like lightly painted or maybe it's even um, kind of colored pencil work or something. Like a lot of it looks kind of just very textured. It's, it's definitely interesting. Like as far as like, how rich some of it like it almost looks like it's like painted on a black paper not the other way around like these blacks look pretty deep all the way through so it looks like all the highlights are drawn on top of it that's kind of cool now and here here it's like the opposite like it's like it looks like it's like a blue paper and they're just like unless they did a wash you know they just paint the whole canvas Paint the whole canvas blue first, and then kind of did the layering over it. That's also a possibility, and I guess that's that's the thing too. It's like you can't, I can't help but see this stuff and try to deconstruct it. Just be like, okay, well, which which way did they go here? Like, because you can see, it's like it's kind of hard to see, but there's a just kind of a light little bit of a canvas texture that you can see in this image that you can't really see in the uh, the previous one. And same with this one, it doesn't really have a lot of, like, maybe it could be like a marker watercolor kind of mix. Yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting, the the, uh, uh, the different things they're going for here. Like this one here, like, you know, you're seeing like all this stuff, but there's, it doesn't have that same paper or canvas texture in it. But I do like the lighting Christmas trees and stuff out here, and then they're whipping through and then the harsh, like, yellow orange lighting of the uh the tunnel and then that color kind of color palette is interestingly enough carries over into this and this is a very canvassed if you can see there like in the actual picture you can see like the cut of the paint and stuff like right along here right like you can actually see that this was on a canvas and that there's like it almost looks like he's glued that piece down oh well, that's weird oh well, that's cool 
Um, but yeah, you know, you got the big shot of the SDF-1 here. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Oh, we'll slip back here. And now, well, we'll whip around here. Uh, and now a lot of this stuff looks like it's like Copix. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of that stuff just looks like marker. That's cool. You know, you get these little bustling areas like the shops and a lot of the ads and stuff on the ground, a lot of the 3D stuff. Yeah, that's really good. But yeah, like this, and this stuff all looks like, you know, it's just Copic marker. Yeah, you can definitely tell there's like a brush kind of markery look to the ceiling there, for sure. Yeah, same with a lot of that, just kind of like skiffing, skiffing out to get the shadows. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, but that, see, that's the thing. It's just, everybody was working with a lot of different stuff. A little Sony. But yeah, and that's the funny thing. A lot of that times they would change it to Sunny or S-O-N with an E little accent on it. But yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, yeah, they're they're kind of going... Out, like, And that's the thing. They're just going out of their, their way to design these spaces so that when they get to them, they know what they look like. You know what every inch of them looks like. See, we got more here. Oh yeah. Okay, so this would have this would have been where Rick and Min May crashed, and when they were stuck inside the bowels of the SDF one. So that's kind of neat. They're like kind of laying out that shot, the kind of the lighting and everything for it. You know, I love all the little notes. Same here, um, where he like like straps her in so she can go to sleep, and there's just like a floating Coca Cola machine there. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, a, a lot of this stuff is, like, really charming and just, like, how how interesting and innocent a lot of it is. And it captures that mood. They got the clothes hanging out because they've been there. Just trying to live what they can scrounge up in the bowels of the SDF-1. That's yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, we got more here. A lot more of the stuff... Um, like, they're, like, showing, like, the planet. Like, the core of the planet and the lighting. Like, how, how it's blocking the lighting and stuff like that. So whenever they go around, they're go there's going to be the dark side of the planet. And where they're going to attack from. And, like, they've got all the schematics of, like, how the battle's going to play out. And where they're going to go. Look at the, the speed. <laughs> 5,150 kilometers. I'm talking about all the grat. Like, that's, that's awesome. They slingshotting around the planet. It's good stuff. Good stuff. What else we got here? We got a few more like storyboards here as well, where he's chasing after her as the battles went. And this would have been when the SDF one was uh, transforming. They get sucked out into space. Yeah, a lot of people in cars and stuff get sucked out. Rick catches her, grabs her, throws her inside the cockpit with them. Yeah, this stuff. This stuff is really great. Like these little storyboards and stuff like that as well. Big fan, big fan. I guess we're getting to the end of it here. It's probably going to be a lot of like interviews, stuff like that. So yeah, this is pretty cool. You got a little Shoji Kawamori. Everybody here. Yeah, it's just all interviews and questions about the production of the show. A <laughs> little Kawamori and his little chibi version of the ship. You know how it is. <laughs> the little drawing of his head and the armor. That's kind of funny. But yeah, really cool book. I just love seeing that kind of stuff and being able to study it and look at how they were animating things. Look at this guy picking his nose. You know how it is. Sometimes you gotta. Sometimes it's dry. Who knows? But yeah, this was really great. I'm actually a big fan of this. I'm glad to have it in my collection now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's it. 1984. 1984. Printed in Japan. Let's go. Pretty cool. But yeah, that's going to do it for the Super Dimension Fortress 1. SDF 1 Macross. Summer of 84. Let's never forget those times we had together. You know what I'm saying? Summer of 84, where were you? Were you born? Were you a fetus? Who can say? That's going to do it for me. Like, comment, subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications. Tell your friends about it. Share it out on social media. Have a good one. Alrighty. Bye-bye.